Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about creating clouds and how I use the uh, kind of the reverse contour method in creating my clouds in a painting. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of a drawing here on the actual approach and the thoughts that I have as I create the clouds because a lot of times I just create them from my imagination and I just use this method to create lots of different layers and depth to the cloud. So I just have a HB pencil and a white colored pencil and I've got some gray toned paper here. I drew a box that represents the canvas and first thing I do when I'm looking at the canvas is I create um, an overall shape to the cloud. So I do that uh, two different ways. You can either paint the cloud in first with whatever cloud color you're going to use and you want to use a color that's probably a mid-tone so that way you can work the values up you don't want to start super light because then you don't have any room to go lighter so that's one way the way i really like to do it um, is painting in the sky so if this is a blank white canvas uh, i start painting in the sky, so we'll say this here, we'll do a little bit of light hatching. This area here is what I paint in first. And so all of this negative space, which technically it's not really negative space because it's the cloud, all of this white canvas will end up being the cloud. So when I'm painting in this sky here, I'm thinking about the actual shape that I'm leaving, the white canvas that I'm leaving, uh, because that will be the cloud shape. Okay, so this all is painted in whatever sky color that you're using. Okay, so once I have, then what I'll do, the next step is paint in, I'll paint in this entire shape here, uh, this cloud a certain color, like kind of like I said before, uh, you can decide to paint the cloud first, then the sky, or the sky first, and then the cloud. Uh, no matter which way you do it, Let's say that the sky is blue. This area here, we're gonna use a blue-gray and paint in the entire cloud. A lot of times what I like to do is create a gradient where that blue-gray is a little bit lighter on the top third of the cloud and then slowly gets darker as it goes down through here. So um, if we were to lighten the cloud a little bit, we'll say that this gray here is kind of the top third, so it's already a little bit lighter. So when you pick your gray color for your cloud, you start off a little bit lighter, and then you add more and more mid-tone gray as you get down towards the bottom, and then down at the bottom here, it gets into be uh, gets to be a little bit more in shadow. So down here is a little bit darker. Okay, and I'm just going to darken up this line a little bit just so you can see the cloud contour a little bit better. Normally you, you wouldn't want, this would be light and it would be defined by the lighter color and the darker color sky. So with pencil, you know, you're limited and I don't want to make this less than three hours long. So just for the sake of you being able to see there's our cloud shape so when we have the overall cloud shape we've got our sky in we've got our cloud in we made sure that our edge here is nice and soft uh, we have the gradient of a little bit lighter up here down to a little bit darker it doesn't have to be a drastic change but just a little bit of a value shift next comes breaking up the cloud into sections so the reverse method is basically taking this big mass and making it into smaller masses, uh, in which will end up making a three-dimensional shape. So, for example, what I like to do is usually start around halfway down the cloud, and this is with my lighter color paint now. I'm creating similar contour shape just like we did up here. The only difference is 
I start my paint down low in the lower parts and I'm painting up and away from this contour that I just created. So the easiest way to do this is so you want it to be a little more concentrated down low and kind of disperse and get a little bit darker up top. And that doesn't mean you have to paint it darker, it just means you have less paint as you get further away. And that will just automatically make it a little bit darker. So, do these contours have to go all the way across the cloud? Nope. They can just kind of dissolve. And connect up. So, you know, you can have this darker contour here and um, it doesn't have to go all the way across the cloud. Okay, so now you can clearly see we have this section of cloud and this big section of cloud. What I like to do next is maybe break it down into another section. So again, just creating some unique contour shape. And then after you create that shape a little bit with your paint, you're concentrating the lighter color down low and then dispersing it a little bit as you get up higher. So around the contour, it's a little bit lighter and then it fades as you go up. And what that does is it maintains this dark edge of the previous contour. So to keep it simple, What I like to do is break the cloud into maybe three sections like this. So we've got this initial section up here. Then we broke it down here into that second section. And then we added another one to break it down into thirds. So once I have that, what I like to do is I go up to the top and I do smaller contour sections. Okay, so we're breaking this down into smaller sections and still doing the same method as before. So maybe even over here, lighter color towards the contour and then fade it out a little bit as you get further away from it. And you can do little contour sections as well up in that top part. Okay, and then maybe we'll reinforce just some of those contours. So this is what I like to do is as I'm painting, I'll reinforce some of those highlights, make them lighter, but still disperse as I go up with the paint, so it gets a little bit darker towards the edge. So I like to break up this top part into a lot of little sections. And we're just leaving little bits of those dark edges. Okay, so maybe I'll continue it down now. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. And I sharpen with a box cutter. I don't know if you've... Uh, I find that sharpening pencil with a box cutter, you get a nicer point. So... And it's quicker. Okay, so continuing that same method, 
a little bit lighter down in the lower valleys there. And then as I get over here, like I said, not every contour has to be connected. Sometimes they can overlap. What you want is a combination of light and dark. Sometimes maybe you go all the way to the edge with the light. And then maybe you go even brighter in some of those spots. All you're doing is taking and breaking down the same sections over and over into smaller sections. And so as you go down the cloud here, and you can do it different. Sometimes you might want this area here to be more detailed, but as you go down the cloud, you just keep creating these contours adding your lighter color and blending up. Then once you have, and I'm just kind of going through this quickly here, so I'm not trying to make it perfect or anything like that. Down here, you, maybe you can just do just a really light faded area of contour, just to so, show some texture. But the idea is to try to keep it light um, and then darken up as you go. Every once in a while, Maybe you can go uh, a little bit lighter in some of your darker spots. It's really up to you. It's just kind of random. It's just about the technique. So it's creating the contour, trying to keep the contour edges darker and up top, and then lighter down in the valleys. So the first part, like I said, it's kind of kind of like a road map. You're, you're setting up all your contours and you're trying to get, so maybe it gets darker as you go lower here. And remember, this is just the reverse contour technique where you're cutting the contours out. You can always paint contours directly as well. This is just a different technique. And this makes the cloud look really, really three-dimensional when you do it with paint. Okay, so once you have kind of your road map there, then it's a matter of taking your paint and lightening it up in some spots. So keeping dark edges, but lightening up some of these valleys. So I always start low, down by the contours, lighten up, and then blend up and away. So start down by a contour, 
and you're fading as you get up towards the edge. And you can always continue breaking your cloud up into smaller and smaller sections. It's up to you on how detailed you want it. Sometimes you can just do a few contours and that's all you need. Okay, so of the sky, we're a little bit darker here. You can start to see as the cloud or as the sky is a little bit darker, um, it kind of makes the white pop out a little bit more. So, Okay, and just trying to give you a good visual here of the, the values. A lot of times the value down here in the cloud is also going to be a little bit darker. You have to think this part of the cloud is usually furthest away from the light. So this usually approaches the same value as the sky or darker, but for this exercise it doesn't really matter, so. Okay, so once I've kind of got Like I said, once I have my cloud kind of set up, I like to really break down the top part or the bottom part, depending on where I want the focus, into smaller sections. And it's just a matter of going over the same spots, really, lightening up some of those lighter or those lower valleys and then blending up and away. So you can see you're trying to keep some dark edges.
Okay, so that's basically an overview of doing the reverse method. You basically take a big mass, you break it down into maybe two or three sections, and then you keep breaking those sections down into the same shapes, just smaller and smaller and smaller. The highlights are low. That's what you create the contour with, is with the highlight, and then you blend up in a way keeping the brighter paint lower and the darker paint up a little bit um, higher. And the darker paint is just thinner paint. It's not, you're not darkening it on your palette. You're just painting less paint onto the canvas, which essentially makes it darker because we started out with a darker mass and those darker colors show through. So we use that to our advantage and that's what helps create that nice atmospheric look and three-dimensional shape.